Hi everyone, Sam Haddon here, client manager and strategy specialist at Infinite Wealth. I want to bring you a quick video today going through some highlights of a Perth, Western Australia economy and property market update. So I'm going to share my screen now and walk you through some very interesting slides uh, and data from some of the top research companies that we do work with. So uh, I'd also like to give a bit of credit to those uh, companies today, uh, SQM Research, Iron Fish, Propertyology, uh, and uh, CoreLogic. So <clears throat> Western Australia as a whole is a really amazing economy right now. When we look at things across the board, uh, we can see that our uh, price wage in index is increasing very strongly. Inflation has been under control in Perth more than other states. Our weekly earnings is the highest out of all states for the average weekly income. And then, of course, our resource sector, particularly in a state of the global economy right now, is really soaring. Uh, our gross uh, state product is very high. Unemployment is the record lowest across all states. Um, and our population is growing very fast as well. Now, post-economic boom, post-COVID, we've seen our unemployment rate drop from 5.6 as a 10-year average to 3.6%. So at the moment, according to this data from the ABS and ANZ, there's approximately 1.5 jobs per every one person unemployed. So 50% more job vacancies than unemployed people. So there's surging uh, employee demand over the last couple of years, uh, increasing to over 60,000 jobs, which are vacant just in Western Australia. So that's uh, now leading towards a big um, population growth boom that the government is implementing a big plan. I think last year was 700,000 total visas. And this year, they're looking up to a million uh, with WA set to get a big chunk of those, both permanent and, um, and temporary visas and student visas. Now that China um, has put a ban on online study, their students will all be coming back. Uh, so we can see obviously a big dip during COVID, borders were closed and now population is growing significantly. And state by state, if you look here, Western Australia just got up to 50,000. Now the last time we had a big economic boom in Western Australia, we were, we were getting up to about 60, 70,000 people per year. Next question is, where are they all going to live? The WA state budget is fantastic. It's creating a lot of jobs, a lot of activity in our economy, um, obviously in infrastructure, major roads, uh, the metro net, schools, health services. And when you look at our state operating budget uh, in the last financial year, you can see Western Australia had a profit of 5.7 billion. Second was Queensland with just under 2 billion. But uh, look at the New South Wales and Victoria, hence why uh, things are going down there a little bit uh, with their big deficits. So our economy and our mining and resources is really keeping us strong here in Western Australia. We have $13 billion going in, into infrastructure. So that's obviously creating a lot of jobs, a lot of economic activity, a lot of investment. Uh, the Mestro Net, which is due to be completed in 2026, which will be connecting Perth with uh, a range of more uh, train lines. Um, obviously, the docking facilities, uh, Perth stuff is going on in the Perth city right now, a lot of high rises, um, a lot of big uh, apartment buildings and office buildings as well. Um, in WA, according to Comsec, is leading relative economic growth as well. <clears throat> the national property clock now is leaning towards the property market now. Uh, we see that uh, Perth is still very much a rising market, just having recovered from our last downturn, which was uh, a lot longer than any would have, us would have hoped, having a, a big hangover from the 14-year mining boom that we had uh, starting in the early 2000s. But uh, obviously, still a lot of growth to go. We can see Brisbane's coming off the boil now and Melbourne and uh, Sydney well and truly off the boil. If you look at our um, prices and rents uh, across the country, as you can see here, We've got uh, Perth with a medium house price of only 579000 still achieving an average rent of 500 which I think has gone up to about 550 now. Um, and the rental yield is about um, coming into above 4 uh, to 5%. Sydney, medium house price, 1.4 million. Melbourne, 1 million. Brisbane, $880,000. So big disparity there. Uh, obviously, we've got a lot of catching up to do. Uh, with Perth, especially given that our incomes are uh, higher than those three cities as well. <clears throat> uh, 
And then, of course, the shortage of housing that we have here in uh, Perth, Western Australia is just unbelievable. Uh, I mean, it's a great opportunity for investors, but uh, as a social issue, it's, it, is quite, uh, it is quite dire. Uh, so there was a study done between the uh, ABS and REWA <clears throat> showing that we need over 20,000 homes to be built uh, just to catch up. And our maximum capacity over the last few years has been about 14,000, 15,000 homes per year. So we're just not building enough homes. And REWA, the Real Estate Institute of Western Australia, uh, coming out and saying we've had the lowest vacancy rate of uh, rental properties in over 40 years. The vacancy rate, uh, really rock bottom. Uh, as you can see here, 0.5%. The amount of available rental properties, <clears throat> excuse me, since January 2019 has declined 84%, a very tightening market here, supply and demand. And then when we look at the building forecast versus the population growth here from Matusik and the ABS, we can see that uh, there's been approvals for 15,700, hoping that they all get built. But just to keep up with our population growth for, based on houses per average uh, uh, occupation, we need almost 23,000 homes. So we're going to be in a deficit of 7,000 homes in the next 12 months. So this is not a problem that's going to get fixed anytime soon with the current population growth and our ability to build houses. Then when we look at the affordability, what we can see here is that, again, Western Australia, one of the most affordable markets in Australia, we can see roughly 28% of our incomes go towards our mortgages here in WA versus Sydney and Melbourne, for example, 47%, 39% which is why you're seeing a lot on the news right now about their prices coming back with the interest rates, uh, obviously hitting them a lot harder because their prices are you know, double or more of Western Australia. And then here's our incomes. Uh, so we're second only to uh, ACT, which is Canberra, um, but higher than all of the other major capital cities in terms of an average weekly income, which just means that we've got so much more disposable income to go towards uh, property growth and rental growth. Then uh, an analysis here by Michael Matusik, been studying the property market for over 30 years, and he said the most reliable um, baseline for sustainable house prices is six times household income. And if you do that on Perth, what his metric shows us here is that we should have a $825,000 medium house price, uh, which is over 200,000 um, capital growth and over 33% um, of uh, capital growth. Perth is the cash flow king uh, for investors all over Australia right now. We're getting the highest rental yields, which is the rent relative to the cost of the property to buy. Uh, the average sitting at 4.5%. What we're seeing for a lot of our investors in the properties that we're getting is, is well over 5% now, um, sometimes even getting close to 6%. Um, and we've got the lowest vacancy rate again. So only more rental growth to be predicted here um, in the next 12 months, another 12 to 15%. Then when you look at um, a survey done by uh, Piper, which is a Property Investment Professionals Association, where they surveyed, uh, I think, 17,000 property investors, 40% of them voted Perth as the best place to buy a investment property over the next 12 months. So a lot of the experts all having a consensus that Perth is going to be the best outlook for property investment. And then moving on to the mining boom. So we can see here, Plenty of things going on. Mining industry, demand for global resources, energy is now in full swing. Um, we're seeing, you know, the resource sector tip to make a record $450 billion. Um, and some of the largest financial reporters all writing articles about the mining boom coming. Um, things like uh, Fortescue, FMG, having best ever half year performances. So obviously our economy very much uh, based around uh, mining and resources. And you can see this when you look at the commodity prices uh, over time, boom in the 70s, late 80s, a little bit in the 90s, but then a, a long one here in the 2000s. And if you look at Perth property prices, you'll see almost a complete correlation with that when the commodities and resource sector is performing well. Uh, 1970 to 1976, property prices doubled. 1985 to 1989 doubled. And then through the 2000s, I mean, gosh, $150,000 in 2000 going to over triple um, by the time we get to the 2013, 2014, when Perth sort of reached its last peak in that boom. And then an economy-wise, guys, I mean, 
Australia, there's a lot of bad things going on right now in the news, inflation, interest rates, but we're still seeing in the data that we have record high household wealth and equity in properties and still record high uh, incomes, which are increasing as well. Um, and then now when it comes to interest rates, the uh, common narrative by the uh, doomsday sayers and the uh, typical journalists trying to get hotlines in the media is that interest rates crash the property market. It's either a boom or a crash. Everyone loves uh, a sensationalized uh, media article about property. But here is a, a clear evidence of 2002, a bit small here, you can see in the middle of Australia, 2002 to 2008, we saw interest rates go all the way up to 9.5% in the last interest rate rising cycle. And yet, Perth grew 147% during that time because there was an infrastructure and mining boom and high inflation. Inflation pushes up rent, it pushes up asset prices. So just because interest rates are going up doesn't mean that property prices will not grow. It's proven time and time again. And finally, some uh, predictions here from SQM Research, one of the most credible research companies in Australia. They've given a couple of scenarios here. Uh, so with scenario one, interest rates, and this is the cash rate from the RBA, which is currently at 3.6, it may get to 3.85. The general consensus from all the experts is that that will be the peak. So in case number one, if cash rate goes no more than 4%, inflation goes no more than 8%, it's already dropped to 68 and unemployment doesn't get any more than 5%, we'll see Perth grow 4 to 8% in 2013. And then in the best case scenario, interest rates peak no higher than 4 but then we get rate cuts, interest rates dropping towards the end of this year, and then inflation falls down to 5 and an unemployment stays, we could get 9 to 13% capital growth uh, in Perth, which could be many on the value of your property I and mean, an average property anywhere between forty to seventy uh, to eighty thousand dollars in growth, which would be a big equity uplift for you um, to potentially go and get your next property as well. So, in summary, SQM's forecasts here are four to eight, thirteen percent uh, capital growth and twelve to fifteen percent rental growth in the property market in Perth right now. So I hope that you found that uh, information very valuable for you. Uh, if you'd like to reach out to me or your advisor to discuss your strategy and see how we can help you move forward, please reach out and have an amazing day. Thank you.